Hey everybody, it's Bill. So just before we get this episode started, I wanted to say just a couple of things. This is the final episode of our Guest Game Master series, and I just wanted to thank all of our Guest Game Masters for coming on and bringing us such fantastic rooms. This one is no different, it's another phenomenal room. We are really lucky that we have an audience of people who are so creative and so talented and so willing to come on and bring us these fun games to play. So thank you to everybody who was on. It's always a wonderful thing to play through these rooms, and we are so appreciative of it. So thank you. Now, after this, we'll have a Christmas special, and then next year, we'll have two more seasons of fun Escape This Podcast content. Next year, we're changing up the order slightly, and the first half of the year will be standalone rooms all created by Danny, so having a normal sort of standalone arc, and we'll be doing our connected story arc in the latter half of the year. That means that next year we will not have a dedicated fan Game Master season, but we do want to try and find a way to still run games for anybody who has written them and want them to be on the show, Uh, but we haven't yet figured out exactly what that may be. It might be live-streamed versions uh, or maybe a separate feed We're not sure, but we'll keep everybody posted as to how that will work. So if you have a room that you've written that you really want us to play, we can do that next year. We don't yet know how. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that we recently did a special guest episode of Good Job Brain. A few weeks ago, their episode 219, called Escape This Pub Quiz, Danny created an entirely new bespoke escape room uh, set around a kind of pub trivia setting And we had the cast of Good Job Brain play through it. And they did fantastically. It's a wonderful episode. So if you're looking for more Escape This Podcast content and you can't wait a fortnight between rooms, that's another room that you can go check out right now. And while you're there, check out everything else that Good Job Brain does. It is one of our favourite shows. It is one of the shows that got us into podcasting when we decided to become podcasters. And it is phenomenal. If you like trivia or facts or fun at all, you should go and check it out. And you'll recognise the cast from the finale of What Alice Found. So go check that out. It's absolutely a great episode. It's a really lovely room that Danny put together and they play it brilliantly. All right, that is all being said. I've said too much. I've been talking too long. Let's get into the final episode of this Guest Game Master arc. It's a good one. Welcome to Escape This Podcast, a show that's a mix between tabletop role-playing and escape room puzzles. I've completely broken my cadence because that was my third attempt at introducing the show, but I got the words right. This is episode 12 of season 9, our guest Game Master season. This is the last one? This is the last guest Game Master. But but we jumped to Christmas. But that's 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 by me. I did that one. Yeah, this is the last guest Game Master room. Mm. So if it's not perfect, if there's any flaws whatsoever, it won't be acceptable. It has to oh, be. I thought you were going to say it will ruin the rest of the season yeah, retroactively. Every, I'll throw the whole, I, will, I will take down the entire season if there is anything in this room that isn't 100% the best thing we've ever seen in our lives. So let's meet the GM for so, today. <laughs> our guest GM for this episode is a return, a return guest, not a return game master or a return player because she's not playing this time. She didn't game master last time, but it's a return guest to the show. It is Gemma from Gem the GM. Welcome. Thank you. Hello. Thanks for having me back. And You've thanks... been waiting for 20 minutes while we got through that <laughs> well, intro. We just rambled nonsense words. Hey, no, it's all good. I understand. I've been there myself. But uh, yeah, thank, thanks for all the pressure. I'm, I'm the finale. Yeah. yeah, it has to be <laughs> perfect. Uh, <laughs> um, now, you, you've been on the show before. Uh, people would recognise you as one of our very, very, very elite group of uh, guests who tried foolishly to play a room by themselves with no help. I think it's just you and (laughs) Tess from episode one, and that's it. Wow, really? Nobody else has done it? I think so. No, everyone else is too scared. It was easy. You hear that, future guests and previous guests? You're (laughs) all too scared. Uh, You played through our bakery room from season five, I think, which has, for me personally, has become like a cult hit. It's kind of like a sleeper <laughs> hit, that room. 
It's like when we first looked at it, I had it was kind of like, oh, I've got some issues with the flow of this room, mm. and I was like, oh, and and then like it, it was we had you as a single player, so there were these moments where it's like, oh, it's so hard when someone's not bouncing ideas off. I mean, you did much better than I would do, uh, but it's hard when you're not bouncing ideas off each other. And then the next time I looked at the room, I thought, or the the episode in the room, I thought, this is a good episode. This is a good room. I came back to it a little while later. I said, this is. I think this is my favorite room from season five. I think this is one of the best. Ro- I've just, I've just, it's really grown on me. You get to eat you pies. You did do that a bit. You get to look at all the menus and find out what scrolls are. It was wonderful. Yeah, I just remember playing through the room and I got to eat everything, which was fantastic. But then I remember we tried to do the post-show talk and my brain, because I tackled it on my own, of course, my brain was just like scrambled eggs and... I yeah. listened to the post show episode and I was just like, Gemma, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> I did. Like, thank you so much for carrying that conversation because I was just out of it. I'm surprised you, you, you were still awake. <laughs> I feel like you need a nap after something like that. Yeah. Like, no, I thought too much. I had to take a red cube and a green chair and a blue. No, that's too much. Yeah, you keep asking me how I'm feeling about the rooms of this season and how I feel I'm doing. You have not once asked me how I feel about how I'm doing in the post ep conversations. Well, that's true because they're just casual, Dan. They're a blur. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, you've been on, on the show before, so you have answered these questions, but it's been a long time. I remember when you were first on, you had only just started your podcast, I think, and now now yeah. you've done a whole bunch of, of episodes. You've 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 recorded your own version of Children of My like your own playthrough of Children of Mysaris, a whole bunch of stuff. So obviously you have a lot of new experience. So what is your escape room experience? Oh my goodness. So yeah, I've played around about 150 rooms. Just nice. just under, not not quite yet, because that would be a celebration. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've been a games master on and off for six years, and I have my own podcast, Gem the GM, where I talk about escape rooms, but I talk about games masters and escape mm. rooms. So, like a lot of behind the scenes stuff, a lot of funny things that we see, uh, a lot of funny things that we do, and all the kind of secrets from behind the games master's perspective, and. Because of the pandemic, I wasn't able to Games Master for a long, long time. And you guys saved me. I played through <laughs> the entire Children of Mysaris arc with my friends and we had a great time and you graciously allowed me to record it and put it out there. So um, that was absolutely fantastic. And thank you so much for letting me do that. I mean, yeah. it means that you managed to get through 10 episodes worth of my very early notes. So <laughs> that's worthy of applause. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, look, for people, if you like listening to Children of Mysaris and you want to listen to it again, but you don't want to listen to you got to judge a whole new crew. Then uh, go and check that out. There's links to Gem's uh, podcast in the show notes, so you can click those and go and listen. Listen to our episodes and Gem's episodes simultaneously, yeah, side by side, <laughs> to pit the people up. against each other properly. Yeah, that's how you got to do it. That's how the real people listen. Um, and look, the other aspect of the show, uh, and for at least 10 episodes of your show as well, I suppose, is that this is also escape rooms mixed with tabletop role-playing. So uh, what is your tabletop role-playing experience or how has that changed since you've last been on? Or has it? It has, yeah. So last time I hadn't really had any um, experience of that, but I have now had experience of a D&D campaign. So uh, nice. very uh, not a lot. Um, my friend started to DM a game and he never done it before. So I joined to try and learn. And I did about six sessions. And to be honest, it was just, it was a bit too much. <laughs> 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 With everything else going on in my life as well, I don't know, I just couldn't quite grasp it and I couldn't quite take it in. So I, I dropped out, but I would be interested in in doing another one when my head is a bit less busy. Um, mm. So yeah, I've, I've done a bit of role play in that. And then obviously I've... Um, you know, done done these well, done your audio rooms as well for, mm. for my team. So, yeah. All right. Now, we I think are ready to get into this room. Mm-hmm. Do you want to give like any kind of, kind of preamble for the listeners about what about what to expect in the room, or should Hurry we just on. jump straight Leap in? Right in? I know we have a little bit of per- of information. I don't think we should we reveal have that been told yet. Some secrets, or should we reveal it mid game? I'm sure it'll become relevant. 
just the only thing I would say for the listener's benefit is that I have given Danny and Bill a little bit of character knowledge, which is just theirs to decide if and when they wish to share it. We have new identities, sort yes. of. Yes, special skills that we bring to this room. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll mention mine when it becomes relevant. Exactly. Oh, I will say my character does have a name. Mm-hmm. But I think, Danny, you should explain your character name first. My character name? Oh, okay, that's fair. Well, I wanted to be a different person, but not too different. So instead of being the Danny from Danielle, I'm going to be the L from Danielle. Yes. And uh, instead of being the Bill from William, I'm going to be the Liam from William. Because it's the a other end. copying cheat. So it's L and Liam for this one. Uh, oh, hello, Elle. How are you? <laughs> this is my Liam voice. Oh, okay. Is that, is that cool? Yeah, that's fair. We can workshop it. No. Now? Yeah, we'll, no, we'll just okay. workshop it now. Excellent. Oh, how about... um? Mm. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy <laughs> boat. Uh, how about... How about uh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Put on a fake <laughs> accent a fake... and do it and it becomes easier. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. It does. Fascinating. Uh, yeah, what about that? Hello, L. it's me, Liam. I'm, nah. I'm going to be investigating all the things in this room. Uh, There's nothing weird. that can weird. keep itself hidden from our eagle eyes. Yeah. Is that good? Uh, so let's, let's do this Okay, we should start the room. <laughs> <laughs> she looks so uncomfortable. You're actually making her twitch. <laughs> Bonjour, Elle. Uh, it is me, Guillaume. Uh, 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 and I have uh, a lot of uh, skill in puzzle solving. I should solve all the puzzles. Uh, Except for a few which I will leave for you. It's an act of chivalry. Uh, like a chevalier. <laughs> As chivalry, so do I. Guillaume. The puzzle solving misogynist. <laughs> um, there, right. were two, there was so much accent. I didn't hear a single word except misogynist for some reason. <laughs> ah, the chivalry is just misogyny. All right, so. <laughs> this is all staying in. I, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready for the room. I've done, I've got it out of my system, nah. and and I'm happy for Gemma this to whisk us away. This is what I mean away. when I say don't indulge us. <laughs> yeah, she meant me. Uh, oh yeah, I'm good. Let's let's get straight Are into we ready? it. Ready? Okay. Here we go. L, you wake mm. up and you feel groggy. Your head, oh, it hurts and it's pitch black. Man, you think to yourself, how much did I drink last night? But, hang on, you weren't drinking last night. What the? What? Why can't you move? You, you can't move your head, your arms, or your legs. Oh, oh, you start to panic. It's total darkness. Your breath quickens as you start to whimper. You feel your breath being bounced back straight onto your face and you call out and the sound stays contained all around you, echoing in this confined space that you seem to be in. You're laying down on something very hard. It feels pretty much like you're directly on the floor. And your arms and legs feel like they're shackled. Help, you shout, hoping that someone else is around you so you don't feel so alone, but no one answers. As your head starts to clear, you realize that you must be inside a box. Oh, are you buried? You you start to panic even more as thoughts of being buried alive run through your mind and you scream and scream. Liam, you wake up with a start, unsure of what woke you. Your head feels a bit groggy and the bright morning sunshine is not helping. You obviously forgot to close the curtains last night. You go to turn over and you realise that you're not in your bed. Actually... no, I've been buried alive. In the sun. You're laying on grass. You're outside. Oh my goodness. You sit up quickly and look around you. You're literally in the middle of a huge field. Grass in the odd tree is all you can see around you. You rub your head a little bit and try to gather your thoughts. You survey what's closer to you. There's a single large tree behind you. And next to you, there's a large wooden box. It's about a metre and a half long. Just under a metre high. Just under a metre in width. So it kind of looks like a box that you would use for transportation or freight. Or some Mm. kind of very basic coffin. (laughs) Hmm. Very weird. 
you start to get up slowly to inspect it more closely when you jump out of your skin. <gasps> there's, huh. there's screaming coming from inside the box. And it sounds like L. L. <gasps> oh, we know each other. My stepmother. <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> How did you get in there? <laughs> um, it works if you want to remain married for this. <laughs> or if you want to be something else, but it, it's better if you know each Elle, other. Elle, the butcher's wife. Um, chop, chop. And me, Liam, the butcher. <laughs> <laughs> but a rival butcher. No, okay. no. Okay, I'm the butcher. You're the butcher's wife, but I'm a vegan butcher. Okay. So, so I just chop up vegetables all day. Gotcha. All right. Uh, can I can I open the box? Can I just take the lid off? So it's a very sturdy looking box. And as you walk around it, you see six padlocks. Whoa. Oh, well, I'll release you later. Like actual padlock padlocks with keys. So there are two at one end, one on each side, about halfway up or down the box. And there's one in the middle at the top. There appears to be a lid, but it's very hefty. And on top of the box, there's a strange and scary looking contraption. It's secured by a lock that appears to be holding the box lid closed. That's in addition to those six padlocks? This is like a seventh lock? No, there are six in total. Cool. Okay. So there was two at one end, one on each side in the middle, like about halfway down the box, one at the top, and then this one holding the box closed. Cool. Okay. This weird contraption has some kind of balance, like, scale on it. You survey it a bit closer to try and figure out what it is, and your blood turns to ice as you realise oh. that this is some kind of elaborate anti-tamper device. It looks like if you try to move the box or force the lid off, this thing will sense it and deploy a huge spike through the box. Oh, oh no. Presumably killing the person inside. That's unfortunate. Um, will L? Uh huh. Just relax. Uh huh. I'm gonna try and get you out. Uh huh. But if I fail, you'll die. Uh huh. A gory and gruesome death. Fantastic. The kind of gruesome, gory death that we avoid as vegan butchers. <laughs> uh, so just. <laughs> This Hold is, your horses. I can't argue with that. <laughs> the horses that we wouldn't butcher. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so. Just to clarify, we were talking about those locks. Were they all uh, key padlocks? Yeah, those those other ones. Oh, yeah, all of them. All the padlocks. Are they like you put a key in and you open it up? Or do they have combinations or what? Yeah, they're all different. Oh, Ooh. boy. If you inspect the locks a bit closer, the locks are attached to chains that go inside the box. Ooh. And looking from the sort of the head end of the box, the one right at the top is a four digit combination. And upon closer inspection, you see that each tumbler has been marked with a shape. Oh. What are the shapes? There is a circle, a triangle, a rectangle, and a square. Oh, Danny. <laughs> rectangle and square right next to each other. Danny, you've been squid gamed. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Danny, you've been squid gamed. Ah, always the way. All right, so that's the head one. Okay, the lock holding the weapon type thing, the anti-tamper device, oh, yeah. is a four-digit combination lock. The lock on the left, halfway down, is a directional lock. The lock on the right, halfway down, is a padlock that requires a key. Mm -hmm. And then there's two locks at the bottom. There's one to the left, which is a four-digit combination lock with coloured tumblers. Just so they're just colours on each of the digits, not colours and numbers? What? Um, so the, the tumblers that hold the numbers are coloured themselves. Okay, but they do... So it'll be like... It's like a blue... An entirely <laughs> blue tumbler that will then be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. Et cetera. Yeah. Cool. Not... Four tumblers, one of which is blue, red, green, yellow, That you orange. just happen to like call a number it, lock? Like you would say, well, did, I don't know. I, that's why I was asking. I got confused because I pictured the tumblers having multiple colours that you're selecting, but mm -hmm. that's obviously not right. E there are four tumblers and each mm -hmm. tumbler yep. is a different colour. Yes. Yeah. What are the colours of those tumbles? They are white, yellow, 
red and blue. Lovely. And the final lock on the right at the bottom of the box is a five digit combination. Okay. That's a lot of codes that we need. I think you're going to be right. stuck in a box Feeling the good. entire time. Maybe. Uh, is there anything that you can feel, L, inside well, the box? I'm shackled, but is there anything that I can limply roll myself around so my hands touch anything? So, L, you're pretty much immobile at the moment. You are mm -hmm. shackled at both ankles, both wrists, and your head. Okay, yes. so you actually you have a strap around your head as well, so you oh. can't really move anything. You're going to gradually free me yeah, I guess each of the piece chains. by piece, I see. And it's, again, pitch black. It is very dark, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, it's not pitch black. It's not quite. Not Chronicles of Riddick. Yeah. You might be able to get a small hole so that I can see. There What's my air situation? You, you're, you're fine at the moment, yeah. There are tiny, tiny little gaps where the chains are coming into the box. Fair. Um, so, you know, you have a little bit of air. There are tiny pinholes of light. Yeah. But that's just unlikely to be the death cause. Yeah. yeah. But... Or, why don't we do this? Mm -hmm. You've got an hour's worth of air. Okay. <laughs> why not? <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, <laughs> that's the timer. Oh. Um, that's, what I'll tell, that's what I'll tell you. Uh, feeling a little stale in here, about 58 minutes worth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you think we've, I think I've only been looking at locks for two minutes. <laughs> um, okay, well, and, and other than the locks, there's nothing else hidden on the box if I, like, flip it over so Danny falls. Dude! <laughs> Danny falls anti -tamper, onto the side. Anti-tamper, anti-tamper. Oh, yeah, an anti-tamper. I won't do that. But is there anything else, like, written on it or clues, or should I go and investigate something else? Uh, you don't see anything written on the box at all, okay, no. cool. It's very plain. Uh, well, can I check out this tree? Yeah, so the tree is a really cool tree. It's one of those with big branches, they're all twisted and gnarly. It looks really old and the kind of tree that you'd want to put a tree house in as a kid or even as an adult. Um, there are some wild plants and herbs growing around the bottom of it. Ooh. And the trunk Ooh. is, as I said, quite gnarly. There's quite a few sort of hollows in the trunk. So it's, it's a really interesting tree. Mm, can I reach into any of the said hollows and investigate, try and find if there's secret codes and keys hidden inside. Yeah, it does look like these holes would make nice nests and homes for wildlife. In fact, yeah, this this one looks occupied. You peer closer <gasps> and you see oh, a Sydney funnel web spider. Hey. Ah, ah, what you doing in a tree funnel web? Get out of there. Ugh, these are not to be messed with. If that thing bites you and you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, it could really have awful consequences for you. You shiver a bit and keep one eye on it as you look around. Uh, hang on, though. Is is that something else in there with the spider? <gasps> uh, you get a little no. bit closer, as close as you dare, and you can see a small piece of paper folded up inside the hole. Your stomach churns as you know you're going to need that piece of paper. Oh. Hey. All right. What's a funnel web doing in a tree? Hey, it's found a funnel. It's found a funnel <laughs> to web up. Please don't start picking apart the actual reality <laughs> of this room. It's going to fall apart very quickly. <laughs> well, see, trees are avoidable. The places where funnel webs hang out are unavoidable. Yeah, they're always just like a small hole in your front yard. They're like, oh, by the way, I live here and I'm going to kill any children who walk past. <laughs> Bloody funnel web. It's okay. Funnel webs are very useful uh, for, you know, harvesting their venom, for mm. anti-venom. Have you ever seen a, a footage of someone trying to, of someone catching a funnel web? It's I the most embarrassing not. thing I've ever seen uh, for the animal. For the spider. Right. Because the way you catch a funnel web is you, you poke at it. Like you kind of like, you threaten it. You like get a stick and you kind of poke at it. And it goes, oh, you want to fight me? And it rears up and it gets up onto like four legs and lifts its other ones up. Like it's like, yeah, you want to go? And then because it's so like vertical and doesn't, and not, doesn't take up much space, they just get a jar and they go, boop. And they put the jar on top of the spider. And it's so embarrassing because it's like, oh, you're a threat. You want to fight? Here we go. Uh, oh, oh I'm, I'm in a jar. <laughs> and it's so, it's just so let down. It's so sad. Like, you, you thought you were so tough, spider. <laughs> and uh, you know how you know all this, but, uh, Liam? Yes, because I'm a 
vegan. I keep I catch the spiders and I, and I let them out of the house. Well, uh, it's because you uh, all you have done is refer to me as butcher's wife, which is quite insulting, as I am quite a respected arachnologist. Ah, true. Well, we established that my character's a misogynist, so <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, in fact, uh, my my maiden name, which I kept after marriage, is Webb. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Would you say that I'm a fun person to be around? Are you Danny or no. L, L, the arachnologist vegan butcher called Webb? Would you say that I'm fun? fun? Oh, I see. You're fun L Webb. You're fun I've L I've been Webb. planning it since the start. I gotcha. <laughs> you thought it was your idea to make my name just the letter L, but it was mine all along. What? Did you knew there was a funnel web in this room? No, I knew I was an arachnologist. You're, you are canonically an arachnologist? I am an arachnologist. Oh, wonderful. The funnel web existence is just a great coincidence. Uh, well, that's probably why you were canonically declared an arachnologist. It'd be, all, it'd be pretty wild if, if Gemma put a funnel web into the room, also gave you secret information that you were an arachnologist, and it's a coincidence that those two things I didn't know that it would be a funnel web when I made my name Fun L Web. Well, good. Um, <laughs> that, that is... Oh. I'm so impressed. How did you do that? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, no, Danny didn't know I about went the through a web. lot of spiders before I landed on. Oh, there's an L in funnel web. That's a name. I literally told you 10 minutes before we started the game. <laughs> this well, woman's brain is amazing. I I knock on the on the box. Mm-hmm. Oh, careful, knock. careful. And I say. Hey, L. Oh, sorry, Fun L Web. Thank you. Um, what do you know about Funnel Web? Uh, quite a bit. I mean, what do you need? Uh, I need to get something that it's guarding. Give me the info as how to get rid of it. Oh, getting rid of a spider? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's a bit sad, but yeah, I mean, there are some things that they hate. Um, there was an old lady. Mm -hmm. She swallowed a bird. Uh huh. I mean, kind of absurd, but she swallowed a bird. Um, mm -hmm. To catch a spider, would that work in this situation? Uh, depends. Can I eat a bird? <laughs> you know I'm a vegan, but I can eat a bird if you need me to. So yeah, yeah. What do, what do you actually know? There are like a couple of things that I know that they hate. Like I assume that this tree that we're in probably not eucalyptus, right? Uh, I look. Yeah, I mean they hate eucalyptus, so okay. it makes sense to me. I'm assuming this isn't a eucalyptus tree. No, it's not a eucalyptus tree. No. Uh, okay, so yeah, that makes sense. I mean, anything else going on? Because that's not the only thing. Like, I assume mint doesn't grow on a tree. Like you said, it's a big tree, Ooh, right? mint. Yeah. Well, or, you is know, there any, any other plants? It's not an orange tree. Is it citrus they don't love? Okay, so I'm looking for either, because there's a lot of plants growing around the tree, so I can look to see if Oh, any now you tell me. Yeah. So oh. I, probably not eucalyptus or orange, because they'd grow on trees, but maybe mint. I'm going to have a look at the... I'll, I'll see, Stick you, your face in you it and smell. Box, I'll be back soon. No problem. If I check out on this, uh, around the tree, you said there were things growing around the base of the tree, little plants and whatnots and whatnots? Yeah, there are. Can I, can I find like a, like a mint plant? Well, there are a, f a, f a few things. As I said, there are, there are some flowers and some herby type things, but you're not much of a cook, so you're not really sure what they are. Um... <laughs> can I just start eating them? Is that does that work? Uh, bad idea, poison. man. Yeah, maybe that's a bad idea. If you you can pick some of the leaves if you want to. Yeah, I mean mint leaves. Stick smell your like face mint. in and smell. Can I pick a bunch of leaves and smell them, or or shove them at the spider and see if it gets annoyed? Yeah, so you pick one of them. It kind of smells oniony. Um, you're not you're not too uh. sure what that one is. The the leaf is kind of thin. You try a different one. Oh gosh, this one. I mean, you're a vegan, so but you you're aware that this kind of reminds you of roast chicken, not the actual chicken, <laughs> but definitely something that goes with it. This oh, that's Ooh, like, it smells uh, really good. Roast chicken, rosemary with chicken. Oh, that's maybe. Good. I'm not. I, Time. I don't cook, and even back when I did occasionally cook, I've never been any good at herbs and spices. Well. If you this, you keep you going, know. there's there's one other that you that oh, you, yeah. you still have yet to to sniff. So if you pick that one, yes, and oh yeah, that smells just like chewing gum. All yeah. right, that is. What mint. do mint leaves look like? They just look quite nice, don't they? Yeah, like yeah. normal leaves, maybe a tiny bit of spike at the sides. Yeah, 
there is a bit of spike on the sides of these. Yeah, they're quite flat, quite wide, yeah, whilst still being bleak. small. <laughs> we had a little mint plant in our backyard growing up. Oh, really? I'm sure my parents mint. kept trying to grow mint, and I, as a kid, I just kept stealing and eating the mint. <laughs> so the plant didn't, they could never harvest enough mint because I was just be like, no, I just, I've just eaten it. I've eaten Ridiculous. it off the plant like a fool. Oh, Act. wonderful. I found mint. Well, can I use this mint and brandish it hey, at the yeah. spider? Can I just throw it in the hole? Yeah, so if you pick up a few of the mint leaves, do you, maybe you just want to squish them up a little bit to get some of the smell out. And yeah. uh, You didn't bring a mortar and pestle with you? I left my mortar and pestle at home. Mm. You look in the hole and the spider seems to be just out of sight, so you quickly dart your hand in and sort of put some of the mint leaves in there. Initially, the spider starts to attack the leaves, but then, obviously, it realises what it is and it makes a hasty retreat you don't feel like taking any chances so you rub mint leaves all over your hands to make <laughs> them smell like mint you do a double check to make sure the spider's out of sight you very quickly dart your hand in grab the piece of paper Whew, you did it all right so what does this piece of papier say it's a bit strange it's a rather sh strange image which i'm going to send to you Oh, I was going to oh. draw it, but right. I guess I don't get this one. So for people at home, you'll be able to access this image in your in the show notes, but I shall describe it because Danny is in a box. Indeed. <laughs> so I'm looking at uh, sort of five columns, almost, or five shapes that are, that are, that are placed uh, from, from left to right, and it says front in the top middle. Hmm. Like this is a front view of something almost. I'm not really sure. Hmm. And it's like, the it's so one of them is, is like, if you were to go up, then right, and then up, uh, you would get this shape. The next one would be if you what? went up and right. So it's not like a... a How do you get a shape based which, on it's not, it's it like basically a like a line. Okay. And then the third one is just like up and then right. The next one is just right, like from left to right, it's just a horizontal line. Uh, and then the next one is like a U that's tipped over onto its left side. So... If you start at the top left of the shape, you would go right, then down, then left. What was the second shape again? Uh, it was like if you go up and then right. I thought that was the third shape. It is. It's both shapes. They're gotcha. identical. Okay. Um, they're also further horizontal than they are vertical. They're kind of rectangular oh, shapes. That was not like if you were highlighting <laughs> sides of a uh, XL cell. Gotcha. That um, was the exact opposite of how I drew it. Well, you should have drawn it better. You're uh, the one describing it on our audio medium, Billy. So now one of my first Liam. thoughts is that you would, you could, it could be like directional lock stuff because I was describing it in that context. Up, right, up, right, uh, up, right, up, right, right. But that is on the basis that I'm starting from the left side, which works for most of them. But then the third, on the final shape, that would be kind of arbitrary, whether it's right, up, left, or right, down, left, right? Because even if I start from the left, which is already a bit of an arbitrary decision, uh, there are two alternatives to start from. So I don't think it's just that, necessarily. So I'm not sure what else... Something like that, but if they were, you know, in line with each other? Yes. There are also... Well, that's also an element. They are not all in line with each other. Oh, okay. So the first one, the part of it that goes up, that is kind of right next to the next shape's part that goes up. If that makes sense. Like they're overlaying. There's a little gap between them, but they're at the same height. Now, when you say the part that goes up, there are two the bits third, that the go end. up. So the right side okay. of it, that is like next to the next shape. Okay. The third shape is like diagonally down from the second shape. Okay. The third shape is level with the second shape. And the fifth. The horizontal line of the second shape? So yeah, the fourth. Yeah, yeah. The fourth Thank shape you. is just a horizontal line. It's, it's parallel with the, with the second one. Wait, parallel? Well, you know, oh, in it's line with. In line with. Sure. And then the last shape. I'm in a box. Yeah. And then the last shape is the same height as the third. So it's kind of low compared to the others. Okay. So it's like that? Yeah, that's almost exactly what it is. Okay. And it says front. And it says front at the top. I have no idea what this is. Cool. What is at the front of the box? The front of the box. What is that? Is that the head? I would have assumed, based on how I drew it, I would assume the front is feet, but that may well not be right. The only thing that it seems to match if it's a lock would be the directional one. Interesting. You know? Or do you think it's five digits, like the bottom right five digit combo? I'm trying to make it look like letters. 
Oh, Which true. case, I suppose, if you tip it sideways, it looks like N I L L Z. If I tip it sideways, it also looks like two seven seven one U. Intriguing. Right? Which is kind of nothing. If I turn it that way, it could be N I L L Z mm-hmm. Nils. If it's upside down, it doesn't say anything. All of our combination locks were numbers. Yeah, okay. it could be number of lines of each thing. Like it might this be five true. digits. Three two two one. Three. Yeah, there are a few things we. But can then get we to ought to have two separate shapes that are both just indicating three. Mm. So we have got some bits and pieces going here. If you ever get tired of your track, just come uh, yell at my box because I have some thoughts, not about this specifically, just about things in general. Well, is there anything else that do you think we could look at? Well, I'm intrigued by these uh, this lock with shapes on it that you've told me so much about. Oh yes, so there's a four. Di- oh, one of them is a rectangle. Does that help? Uh, that wasn't where I was going, these are all but sort maybe of somewhat rectangles. Uh, what I was going with is shapes inherently have numbers associated with them, like number of sides, things like that. So, oh, I mean, do you want to just see if we can just do that? I mean, yeah. So that's... go for four digit combo with the circle, triangle, the head. rectangle, square mm. at that's... the head of the box, and just try and input what one three four four. Yeah, that. Yeah, was... I mean, may as well give it a crack. Mm? That does not work, unfortunately. Burr. <laughs> Terrible luck. I hate it. <laughs> okay. Where to um, next? Yeah, so if I go back to this tree, was there anything else that I haven't... Like, there's obviously there's the, there's the holes. One of them had a spider in it. There's nothing else to reach into for the tree? You can investigate some of the other holes uh, if you want to, yeah, but please. you don't find anything of, of any use, unfortunately. And same with the plants. I kind of had a look at all those plants that were around the base. Well, you, you concentrated on the herbs. There are some mm, other what else is there flowers like? there mm. as well. Just some lovely wild flowers growing. They're not... Are there very... white flowers and yellow flowers and red flowers and blue flowers? Well, you recognise them. They're very common flowers. Um, you've got, oh, what are they? You've got some bluebells. You've got some poppies. Mm. You've got some daisies. You've got some buttercups. Okay, okay, okay. I know these. I know some blue of these. Bells, those are blue. I think we can safely say. That seems fair. Daisies are white? Yep. What's What else was there? Buttercups are butter, so yeah. yellow. And poppy. And I guess poppies are red. You know what a poppy looks like. Lily white and poppy red. Um, <laughs> that I mean, helps. You can see these plants, Bill, so yes, you can confirm <laughs> that the poppies hey, are red. I'm, so- I'm solving the puzzle. <laughs> I trembled when you laid me out. Uh... I would like to count up the number of bluebells, daisies, buttercups, and poppies. I'm going to look up some of these flowers because I drew things for them, and I just don't know whether they even slightly resemble the uh, flowers. If you want to know a buttercup, um, I can't speak for all buttercups, mm-hmm. but my little buttercup uh. has the sweetest smile. So if you just draw a little sweet smile. Understood. Yeah, good. Oh, yeah, how many of each of the flowers are there? Uh, so you count two bluebells, three poppies, Seven daisies and five buttercups. Well, I was well, that's not. That's our first code. I was not close with buttercups. All right, can I go to the lock at, at the left foot of said box? I, when I say said box, I didn't say box, but you know. And can I put in the code seven five three two? Yeah, that code works. The lock opens, and you're able to pull the chain. And Danny's oh, L's left foot is now free. My kick. left foot. That's the most important foot, I hear. Mm, and a good movie. I kick. Oh, as you do that. Bad idea. You hear a massive clunk. No. Nope. Oh, you're dead. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you have no idea joke. what's happened, but Liam does. On the top of the box, about a dozen spikes have shot out the top so that they're now sticking straight up from the top of the box. Oh, good. That's going to get you, not me. (laughs) Oh, Liam, you're going to have to be careful. It's a good job you didn't have your hand resting on top of the box then. (laughs) Ah, ah, my head! (laughs) Um, spikes. Is there anything I should do with spikes? Ah, uh, anything to break yet? Not oh, really. Oh, wow, I was so wrong about bluebells. Sorry, I'm still just ac- drawing accurate flowers. Does it look like a little bluebell? They really do. Um, okay, so we have spikes available to us now. Okay. Is there anything, if I investigate the spikes themselves, is there anything interesting about the way they're spiking, or, or is it just I have the capacity to stab something on spikes now? 
Well, this, they're attached to the box. If you sort of look at them, they're very sharp. These are medical grade sharp. They are silver. They look very scary. Hmm. Um, you can't detach them. It kind of looks like the lid of the box might be double walled. So hmm. they've kind of shot up through the top of the box. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. I wonder what we're going to need to balance on this scale sort of thing that's going on up there. Yeah, no idea. All right, so I got spikes. I think I have to go back to the tree. Maybe. Do you think that there's anything inherent in those spikes? Do you think that sounded like something we can do? Uh, I think we, we need to. It feels to me like we need to spike something onto the spikes, but. Or there's something that needs cutting. Yeah. But also. besides the chains that are holding me in here, I don't mm. know what that is. Well, is there anything up in the branches of the tree? If I could look, can I climb up or look up? Yeah, you, you well, both if you wanted to. Um, looking up, there's nothing of note. You don't see anything. Then I shall climb. Yeah, I have a good old climb of this tree. It does, it does look like the kind of tree you'd want to climb. It's really cool. But apart from being able to see a bit further from your surroundings, there's, there's nothing in the tree. Okay, well, on that basis, can I look further at my surroundings? Is there anything else for me to interact with other than the tree and the box? And the plants. No, there isn't. There's, it's just grass for miles and miles. That's interesting. So my only options are to look at the box and to look at the tree. And to figure out this piece of paper. And to figure out the piece of paper. Which says 2771U. Seven, seven, it says 2771 seven, <laughs> seven, up. And um, also it says front. And it says front. It seems to me that I have exhausted all avenues of investigation when it comes to this tree. So no right? more searching. No more I've tree searching. I've looked at searching. the plants. I've looked at the hollows. Mm -hmm. I've looked at the branches. I've climbed the tree. To me, there is nothing else to investigate with the tree mm -hmm. unless there's something I've missed in, in description, <laughs> like, oh, you never looked at the roots of the mm -hmm. tree or something. But I don't, I don't think there is. Mm -hmm. mm, we also have an this. onion leaf and a chicken friend leaf. We do have onion and chicken leaf. <laughs> chicken friend. <laughs> um, but I don't know if we're going to do anything with that. Can I look at, I mean, is there a way to... Is there anything exciting about the grass? Is the grass interesting at all? Can I see any patterns when I'm up in the tree, climb up in the branches? Are there any patterns on the ground? No, there isn't. Nothing interesting about the grass. Stupid, useless grass. Hmm. I've never been in a room with so few things and been so panicky. All I can I do is kick. Can I feel? Can I feel around inside? Am I feeling? Is there anything that I can feel with my left foot now, being much more gentle? Well, yeah. So you can really only kind of move it up to the left and sort of, you know, in a circle. Mm. If you try doing that, you notice that as your toes mm. kind of hit against the sides of the box, they do make quite distinct sounds. What? And uh, Liam can hear it on the outside as well. As you stop moving your foot. Liam looks up and hears some similar noises coming from the tree. A woodpecker has joined you. Oh, that's adorable. It's, it's almost like it's copying what you're doing with your foot. Oh. Uh, hey. Really cute. Uh huh. Uh huh. Could you move your foot up the right bit up? <laughs> what? <laughs> See if we can make a woodpecker do these patterns. Sh sure. I, I move my foot around. I'm quite baffled. Yeah, so as you move your foot up, L, because it's hitting the top of the box, which you think is hollow, it makes kind of a hollow sound. If you move it to the left, it's kind of a nice, crisp knock. And then you move it down because you're on the floor, it's kind of a dull thunk. What's the final side? You can't reach the right side with your mm. left foot. Oh, okay. Well, I, I don't, I don't want to push my luck too hard with this thing but if I like scrape my foot along the hollow soundingest part w will the woodpecker find something hollow? Maybe. Maybe make some hollow donks. I make a bit of hollow donk. If you do that, you take a note of the woodpecker, Liam because uh, Danny can't quite hear that from inside the box. Who, sorry? Who, sorry? Oh, oh sorry. I'm just L. Oh, web. oh my goodness. I should have just shouldn't have let you make up your own name, should I? You should have. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so you take a note of what the woodpecker does, and you hear a hollow sound followed by a thunk, then two nice crisp knocks followed by a thunk, Ooh. and then a hollow. Ooh, okay. So oh, I, I should have written that down. I, I was oh so hollow, crisp, 
thud. Oh my god, what was the order? So, no matter what Elle does with her foot, the woodpecker mm -hmm. does this. It's a hollow sound, followed by a thunk, then two nice crisp knocks, followed by a thunk, and then a hollow sound. Well, Elle, <laughs> can you repeat that pattern yourself? So go so, like the top. Let's just go. Yeah, the bottom, so the left, the hollow left, the was bottom, the top. top. Bottom was thunk and left was crisp. I believe so. Yeah. Well, I can try that, but additionally, those sound like directions to me. So it could be that as well. Oh, she like, oh, that's a good point. So can I go to the directional lock and can I go up, down, left, left, down, up? The directional lock pops open. Good call. Yeah. I throw the lock as far as I can. Excellent work. Danny's L's left mm -hmm. arm is now free. Oh, thank God. All right. Let's get into this. So, my, my left foot was useful. Let's see what my left hand can do. Let's see what In your left hand In this universe, can do. I'm left-handed, so oh, I anticipate a lot. I, I, I delicately feel around where I can in here. Sure, there's not really much to feel, but you do <laughs> just move your face, uh, move your hand straight up to your face to give your nose a scratch, because <laughs> obviously that's been itching that the whole makes time sense. um you check everything is present and correct which it is and you feel that the top of the box is only about 10 centimeters above your face oh you're, i hate that you're very enclosed your eyes have adjusted now to the darkness and somehow just knowing where the top of the box is makes it a little bit easier to focus you squint and you can see some writing Ooh. it says Pigment is required to reveal what is desired. Interesting. Do you tell me this? Maybe later. Ugh. All right. Um, so we're going to need some pigmen. Pigmen? Yeah. Well, as a vegan Wait, butcher. Wait, hold on, hold on. Look, I thought it made sense. I realize now saying it out loud, that might not be quite right. Um. Yeah, okay. then it would probably be pigment are required. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, okay, so we need some pigment. Do we have any colourful stuff? We've got, some col oh, we got yeah. a few coloured things. I'm a, when I'm not working as a you butcher... You did bring your mortar and pestle, right? I, no, I didn't bring the mortar and pestle, but when I am not working as a butcher... I tell you every I am, time. I am a painter. Oh. This is not true. This is not my actual back... This is not my secret character fact. This is a fake one I'm making up now. Oh. Uh, I work as a painter, and uh, I can make pigment... <laughs> Uh, just by thinking about it. Fantastic. That's why I took the job. Okay, we need pigment. So as far as what you've told me, I've seen some colourful flowers. They seem good for pigment. I suppose. But... Is there, and there's nothing else that Danny, that that Elle can feel with her left hand? No secret knives? Key? Key would be good. A key? That's about all you can feel for now. I've, I've done my part. I have touched everything. And everyone. Yeah, what do we do to get pigment? Try squishing up a flower, see what Try happens. Squish up a flower and see what happens. You just get a little bit of a squishy mess in your hand. Does it look like pigment? Mm. Could I if... could I crush one of the blue flowers and and smear it all over the box? <laughs> Very gently. Don't forget about that device you don't want to set off. Um, mm. nah. It makes a vague blue hmm. mess. So there's potential there. I don't know where we want to put stuff, what we want to do stuff to. So there is one thing that's been available to you right from the very start that you haven't done yet. <sighs> oh, no. Oh, I get out my phone and I call the police. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Can I have a closer look at the anti-tamper device? Yeah, sure. What, what would you like to know about it? I mean, what is it? It's a spike that'll go through Danny's face? Yeah, so it's it's kind of technical. Um, you're not really sure. Somebody very clever must have put this together. Um, but it's it's holding a, a spike, and it's got this kind of level on it, so it looks like if you were to move the box or take the lid off, the level would be disturbed, and the device would deploy the spike yep. through the box. So what else do we have What's access to? What's been available to you? Lots I... of chains. Yeah. That's been available for a while. I oh mean, my god! It's just been the box. Is it available to me or is it available to L? No. Uh, to you, Liam. Well, unless it's a tree or a box. <laughs> the sky. Look right up. I look up. It's a beautiful blue sky. 
Damn with it. how many clouds? With and what is the Sky Rider written in the clouds? <laughs> That's something that I was. What going five to... digit number has a plane, Matt? Um, I was going to say something at some point. Anything in my pockets? Com- ah, know. well, yeah. If you check your pockets, you Ugh. fine. You don't find a mobile phone, unfortunately, but mm-hmm. you do find a blank piece of paper folded up, and you don't remember putting it there at all. It's the same size as the spider paper. Bloody spider paper. We've had this happen to us once in a room where a GM has slipped something in our pockets before we've started. So cruel. And then you're going to, hold on a second, I've had a key this entire time. Very rude. (laughs) (laughs) All right. What does this new non-spider paper say? It was blank. Yeah, it's blank. Oh, it's blank. Ah, but what if I rub blue crushed flour on it? Oh, we're going to ruin it. It does make a little bit of a mess. Um, You get a blue smudgy mess on the paper. Nothing happens, though. Where else do we have pigment? How else does one make pigment? Presumably, pigment is required to reveal what is desired. I hold up the piece of paper to my mouth and I say, pigment. What's a friend of chi- What's a friend of chicken? Speak friend and chicken. Maybe people put pigment on chicken. And I'm just not no, familiar with don't. it. No, they don't. I take the mint plant... And I and I and I and I shape the little leaf so it looks kind of like the face of a pig. Ah, pigment. And I have pigment. Oh, that's can, awesome. Then, then rub all over the the note to reveal what is desired. Hmm. I wish. Well, we don't have any. What else? What access to pigment do we have? This is interesting. Can I hold up the paper to the sun, and see if anything shines through it? No, it doesn't. I mean, it's not the only colourful thing, which has been the flowers. Well, I mean, lots of things have colour to them. It'd just be what we would end up doing with them. And I don't know what that is. Oh, what are we missing? I think this is the first room of the season. And maybe because it's the last one, this makes sense. The first one where I've just needed to sit in silence for a minute. I mean, it's not first letters of words. It's not final letters of words. I see two reds in there. Are there any other colours in there? I see veal. Veal, the colour of veal. (laughs) There's a hat in the word what. This is true. I don't think this is anything. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. Uh, well, what is your thought? Clearly, it, pigment is required to reveal what is desired. Does not seem to mean if you get some pigment, you can reveal what's written on this paper. If only because we seem to have accessed every object we have access to, and none of them are pigments. And the ones that could possibly be construed as pigment do not reveal what is on the paper. So is that therefore not the message that we've been given? And actually, we need to reinterpret the message pigment is required to reveal what is desired to give us what it actually wants to tell us, which is something that is not the sentence pigment is required to reveal what is desired. Is there something else hidden in there? There is a chance that I'm trying to rearrange the letters of pigment right now. Temping. Temping is required. I don't think that would be it, especially because nothing has asked you to, re- to, 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 to rearrange the word pigment. True. So the, the person that's put you here is obviously not very nice, are they? Oh, it probably is red. What? But the access to red would not be through plants, which is just a kind of a crumbly piece of red. We have a different access to the colour red in the form of some very large silver metal spikes, Ah. which I will use to cut my own hands and bleed all over the paper. Intriguing. And by hands, I mean, I don't know, arm. Much like a butcher does to pig men. Which I would know, but I'm a vegan butcher. (laughs) I've never seen blood. Uh, Yeah, can I cut myself on these spikes and bleed on the piece of paper? Uh, you can if you want. They are very, very sharp. It would be quite easy to do that. So uh, where are you cutting yourself? Uh, forearm. Back of forearm. Okay. You slide your forearm over the spiky, shiny metal spike and it cuts extremely easily. Blood squirts out and you manage to get some on the paper. It reveals an image, which I will send to you now. All right, so for people at home, you also have access to this image. I hope it was worth the blood. 
I, I drew oh, your arm. I hate it. I drew your arm, but unfortunately, the only way I know how to draw hands is palm up. So I tried to make it as clear as possible that you hadn't cut the front of your arm. Perfect. Now, what I've been given is more of the same sort of stuff as the spider paper. Oh, okay. So what I have now, I will try and describe again. Again, there are the five sections, left to right, mm -hmm. spaced out the same as before. Yep. Is there a word at the top this time? Front. Oh. Now, these are now... The first symbol mm -hmm. is like the up and right symbol that we had before, mm -hmm. and then below that, a down and left symbol. Kind of with a bit of a yin-yang feeling. Oh. Uh, sorry, not down, left, left and down. Uh, left and up, left and up. <laughs> so, so it'd be like if you drew one okay. big rectangle and then erased Ch uh, yep. the top right... Or the top of the right side and the bottom of the left side. Lovely. Do you sort of understand? Oh, yeah. For you and the people at home? So the next one would be, again, like a full rectangle. But if you erased the entire top line mm -hmm. and the top half of the left line. So you get like a U that's twice as high on one side as it is on the other. Sure. The next symbol along mm -hmm. is, again, like a big rectangle. If you got <laughs> rid of the entire left side... And the bottom half of the right side. Uh, okay. Like a backwards seven and a one put yep. on its side. That's the worst way to describe no, it. No, I'm with you. The next one is just the vertical right side of the same side of the Great. rectangle. And then the final one is just the top line of the rectangle and the top half of the right side. Okay. Love it. I think, does that look like anything to you? Yes. Now, just to be clear, that's what that's what you've described to me. Yes, that's what I've described to you. Does that look that's like anything out. to you? Yes, yes what it does. does. It, look like to you? it looks like something that needs to be merged with the last one. Oh, you're right. We can add the previous ones. Now I'm going to grab a pencil for this. So if you add that, the first one is an eight, like in block letters, an eight. Oh, I didn't realize that one went down that far, but okay, cool. The next one would be an, a zero. Now, uh, just... I, I didn't see how high your things were in the first one, but I'll take your word for it. That, that matches up. The next one would be a two. Cool. The next one would be a seven. Cool. And mm. then the final one would be a three. That is how I have drawn it. So eight, zero, two, seven, three. So what we've done is we've merged the first symbols with the second symbols uh, and together they form sort of like block letters like you'd see on a calculator or a digital clock. And those letters appear to be 80273, which I'm going to put into that five-digit combo lock on the bottom right. Which I really hope is the front. It works. The nice. lock comes open and Elle's right foot is now free to move. You. Oh, this is the unimportant foot, so I don't have much hope. You carefully move your foot around and brace yourself for the spike mechanism, but there isn't one. Oh, thank goodness for that. You're dying to bend your knees as you've been out straight <laughs> for who knows how long. It was a little difficult with one leg still restricted, but now you can bend both knees upwards just a little way to give yourself a bit of relief. Your relief, though, is short-lived as your knee oh. hits the top of the box. Aww. Bang! More spikes Sorry. shoot out My the bad. top of the box. You check that Liam is okay, and he is. He knows now to stay well away from the box after freeing one of your limbs. Something good has come out of this manoeuvre, though. You can kind of hear something moving in your right shorts pocket. Oh, what? Oh, man, can I reach that with my left hand? Yeah, you can. Um, You wouldn't have been able to before with your leg straight out, but mm. now it's bent, you can sort of twist your body just a little bit. You can reach your right pocket with your left hand. Your fingertips touch several hard items and you scoop them up in your hand and lay them on your chest or your tummy. You can't move your head to see them, so you have to hold them right up in front of your <laughs> eyes. You can't really see it either. They must be black. They feel plastic. So kind of like little plastic shapes. You're relying on your left hand to identify these objects. You feel them very carefully and you note that they are flat and smooth and you can feel that some have four corners with four right angles. Some of them have three edges. I think we know what these are. Some of them have four right angles but with two longer edges and two shorter I'm, edges. I'm very glad I'm able to distinguish that because I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to. 
And some of them don't have any corners at all. They're not even there. Hey, have you described these to me? Sure. I got shapes. Nice. You got circles? I think I do. Wait, hold on. They're not ovals, are they? They don't. No, they, they feel like circles. Oh, thank God. All right. I don't know if I trust my tactile skills well enough to necessarily be able to do this. I've never been put in this situation. But don't forget, Hand L. me a shape. Ha- hand me something. All right, hold on. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you some shapes. <laughs> what is this shape? Danny is <laughs> manipulating a shape. <laughs> what shape is that? Well, it feels like a shape that I may have cut out, so that's not doesn't bode well for it being very good. You definitely did cut out the shape. It is part of the. What Alice found meta puzzle. It doesn't seem to be forming like a real square. It feels like it's trying to be a square, but may not have succeeded at being a square. That is a square. <laughs> a pretty, a pretty good square, I would say. Wow. Yeah, I a, couldn't make my fingers. Oh, oh, sorry. What about this? What shape is this? That's definitely a triangle. That is definitely a triangle. What about this one? That's it. I don't know if I'd have been able to tell that it was a right angle triangle. What about this one? Again, Gemma. You uh, you do not have a time restraint, right? <laughs> no, I'm fine. You only like have parallelogram. You only have your left hand, though. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh my god, I've been cheating this entire time. How many circles do you have? How many? No, do give you me have? one more. I got to do this oh properly. My gosh, what is this? It's an even smaller triangle. Thank you. <laughs> Isn't it lucky that we still have what is this? that we still have shapes from. Is that just last season? Yeah. Damn. Okay. What a long year. How many circles do you have? How many circles do I feel? Uh, You've got one. Okay. Triangles? Two. Long squares? That's what I call them. Okay. Um, Four. (laughs) And normal squares? Three. Shall I set the... uh... Tumblers give it a go. Numbers. Give one, two, four, three a go. I give one, two, four, three a go on that four-digit combo with the circle, triangle, rectangle, and square written on it at the head. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. Ah, I was yeah, afraid of that. I was afraid that having the numbers one to four felt too order So now, do we have to try the same things that we tried before, but no, having a different order for them? What do you mean? So like try the sides, try the letters, that sort of thing. So you mean like do one first, then three well, hold on. seconds. That doesn't work because three and four are the rectangle yeah, so it and can't square. Be that. Could be the number of letters. Could be words, the number though. of letters, I suppose. So you could try so could uh, six, eight, six, six, nine. Six, eight, six, nine. Yeah, okay. Does six, eight, six, nine work? No, that doesn't work either. Yeah, cool. Okay. That's fair because yeah. we have, haven't been given any clues to up. do that. But What are we going to do with these? We've got shapes now. I, Are there anything written on the black. shapes themselves? Can well, you feel the shapes? Is there like a number on them? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Does it feel like there's anything engraved or sticky no. outy about them? No, mm. they feel yeah, just... completely flat, oh, completely smooth. Um, mm. but suddenly, Al, you, mm-hmm. oh, you feel something tickling your ankle. Oh, oh no. God. Oh, God. What is it? What is it? it oh, it's crawling. It's crawling. You, you start to squirm and... Liam yells at you to keep still or you'll set off the device, but oh, you can't move your head. You can't see what this is. There's just, you scream at him that there's something crawling over your feet. Oh, how did it, what is it? And how did it get in there? Oh, that's not great, but okay, that sounds like there's some sort of hole going on. Your eyes are closed. Are you thinking or are you sleeping? Thinking. All right, so something's getting in with me. What is the relevance of you having bugs crawling in there? That there's a way in. Is that it? Can I find these holes, the the, the, the chains we're in? Can I reach in? Yeah, so if you go to the end of the box, you see the small hole that's been left open from where the chain went into the uh, box. And you can see that the box is double layered. And coming out of the cavity are cockroaches. Oh. Oh no! Those are worse than spiders. Only they're they're not all coming out. Some of them are going inside the box. Yeah, I do not like that. I do not like cockroaches. They they are the ones I do not like. Well, I can go get that funnel web, and maybe it'll eat the cockroaches. Do we know? Do do you know anything about what cockroaches hate? No, I'm not a I'm not an entomologist. Ah, what good are you? I'm so sorry. We haven't found my secret skill yet. (laughs) 
So Liam, you're not too scared of cockroaches, so you attempt to direct as many out of the box as possible just to save Elle, and you're fairly successful. You do manage to kind of flick a few out, but obviously mm-hmm. there are some already in there. But when they're all gone, you notice a little glint of silver in the cavity. Oh. Oh. oh can I can I grab the silver? Is it a key? Yeah. If you get it, you sort of you can hook it out with your little finger. That's all that'll fit. But it's oh. a key. Wonderful. Can I use that key to open the other uh, box part, the right side? <laughs> yeah. So the lock on the right hand side is just a padlock, and it works. L's right hand is now free. Okay, we're slowly getting there. Okay, I uh, there's no way I'm going to swat a cockroach, but I I try to flick as best I can. Yeah, the cockroach is too adorable. They're still kind of they're staying down by your feet. So okay, yeah, you're freaking out a little bit. They're crawling over your toes, but uh, Elisa, yeah, not, not great. Coming up That's... as your right hand sort of dropped to Travels. the yeah dropped to the floor as the chain became loose. You you felt something hard and plastic. It's another shape. It must have fallen out of your oh. pocket. Ah, it's a circle. Ridiculous. All right, scrap everything. I was wrong. I thought my left hand could do the job. It couldn't. All right, so what is it? Change so it to a, one, two. So that's a two. Can we then do oh. two, two, four, three on that combination lock? Yep, and it works. Oh. Danny, you can now move your head. Oh, your neck, it's so stiff. You just turn your head to one side just to help uh, like limber up your neck a little bit and... Thunk! Oh, <laughs> there was a button right next to your cheek. You hear <laughs> you hear the bang as dozens more spikes shoot out the top of the box. Oh, I'm glad when you said dozens, but I was picturing more cockroaches. I'm happy with spikes. <laughs> the top okay, of there the are box, only so many more spikes I can draw on this picture. The top of the box is now completely covered in spikes protruding from from it. Yes, it is. Okay, uh, sorry about that. That's okay. You got your face well and truly away, didn't you? Oh, no, no, I've been stabbed. Oh, no. Tenser. There's uh, only one more lock left one as far lock as I can see. The one, the That's good. Combination. Okay. What do we know? What do we still have? Anything? Anything? We have. We need four digits, and the biggest thing we've got is a multitude of spikes. Yeah. So there is now what? It, it, Three layers of spikes have all come out. Know, of what this are these? Thing. Are these like more of the surface area of the box got covered in spikes each time? Yeah. So now it's just 100% spike coverage yes, on the roof. That's right. And Danny is now completely unshackled in the box? She is. Is there anything else that you can find inside? You hit your, a button with your head. I did. Is there anything else that you can find inside this box? All right, a bit more fumbling around and peeking out any gaps that I can now see, anything like that? Yeah, so you haven't really done much with your right hand yet. Um, mm. So if you move it around, you can have a little feel around. You don't feel anything at first, but. When you run your fingers over the top side of the box, towards the right side, you feel some little bumps and you can kind of follow them until they come to a stop. And I'm just going to send you like an image of what you can feel. This is my time to shine. Again, for people at home, you can see that image linked in these show notes. Oh, okay. All right. So what I'm feeling here, I'm feeling they're they're sort of knobbly circles and like some of them are like fat and sticky outy and I can really feel them and some of them are just like you know sort of the general shape like carved into the box sort of thing like they're not sticky outy okay is this, uh, is this ring any bells to you are you a stick out circle expert well I will say something uh-huh when I'm not working as a vegan butcher yes or doing art or doing or, or being a, a painter uh what I am doing with my time is I actually work as a as a teacher mm-hmm specialising in working with blind children. Oh, that could be useful here. And so I can speak Braille. Speak Braille? Yeah, yeah, like this. Top left dot, top right not dot, bottom left not dot, bottom right not dot, left middle dot. I can't tell how offensive this is. That's how you say A in Braille. Oh, beautiful. It takes a lot longer, but but it's very helpful because uh, blind people can't hear. And so you have to speak it in Braille. Oh, of course, sure, sure. Articulate. So perhaps if you could tell me the bumps that you feel, I could tell you. This is you largely why I, I was able to. Represent. I was able to teach myself Morse code, which I have since forgotten. 
I then wanted to go and learn Braille, but I found it too difficult to like keep track of things and write everything down and draw them and stuff like that. So this may not be my strong point. But well, you just give me some descriptions. Okay, so the I first can't see one. Image, you tell me. Oh yeah, so you know it goes in like three rows, right? You've got two top, two middle, two bottom. Yes, yeah, two columns, three rows. Yeah, sure. Thing. Okay, so first one I'm feeling is like a um, top left and then both middles. Top left and both middles. Well, that sounds like an H to me. Ooh, okay. I hope that's right. And then the next one over to the right. Man, it just goes all over the place. Left, right, up, down. Next one over to the right is, I think, just the top left. Just the top left? Yeah. Well, that sounds like an A to me. Didn't you hear me explain it earlier? I don't listen to you. Okay, the next one, um, I've got both of the top row, then the right of the middle, and the left of the lower. That sounds like an N to my ears. Lovely. Next one is just the top four. All four of them. No bottoms. Top four, no bottoms? Well, they call that a G in Braille Town. I don't like where this is going. Next one. Uh, top right, middle left. Well, that's an I. Mm-hmm. And then um, top... Wait, wait. I felt this one before. I felt this one a little bit ago. This was the third one. That was an N, right? I mean, the third one was an N, yes. yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then, then oh, this last G? one. Yeah, that feels like that same top four one again. That's well, a that G. Well, that seems like the word hanging to me. Well, that's a bad thing. Oh, in Braille, it's, it's a good thing. In Braille, hanging means... Oh, it's like tarot. Treasure. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, we've got... Um, I think that's how it works. We've got another row coming, uh, incoming here. Both of the tops and then the middle left. Both of the tops and then the middle left is an F. Hmm... All right, and then we got a all of the left and the middle right. All of the left, middle right, is an R. Good. I hope that was the case. Question for people at home: If you if you are uh, blind or, or blind, I mean, visually, yeah, impaired, visually impaired, in some or form, a braille enthusiast, does well, that count as well? My question is about the braille enthusiasm. Do you, if we have any listeners who are blind or, or visually impaired, do you know how to read braille? Is it something you've learned? Is it something that's common? I do not know if people I learn Braille. I have heard that getting a Braille teacher can be annoyingly mm. hard. Yeah. I'm, just I'm sure that I'm depends just, on where you are I'm as well. Just, especially with the advent of screen readers being so common. Yeah. I wonder how many people still use Braille. I wonder. Or speak Braille. Yeah, I have no idea. I know that our local library has some Braille books in uh, its fun. collection somewhere or now, other. Do you mean books in Braille? Yes. Not books on Braille. Correct. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got to hanging fur. All right, uh... Top left, bottom left, middle right. Top left, bottom left, middle right. God, the order of Braille is so odd. It's so hard. I'm, I'm just like looking. You can't up. find like, a pattern. That's an O. I hope Yeah, I can't so. find a pattern. All right. And then the next one, I'm going to, maybe it's going to be an M. Top top two and then the bottom left? Yep. That is hanging from. Okay. Uh, the next one feels like a certain Tetris piece, the one that you hate to get the most. Uh, do you mean... T- top right, both middles, bottom left? Yes, I do. That's T. Good. And then is the next one the top left and then the two middles? Yep. All right, that's Which an H. Which we've had before. Is the next so one the that. top left and right middle? Yep. That's an E. That's hanging from the... All right, well, that's all the important letters. I think I got this now. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, you're done. Yeah, that's all we need. <laughs> okay. Oh, we've got this Tetris piece again, so I guess that's a T. Yep. Is the next one the top left, middle right, bottom left? Say that again? No, you no. tell me what it is. I rather. think it's R again. Oh, the whole left side and then the middle right? Yep. Cool. I want it to be hanging from the top branch or something, but it's going to be... Uh, T-R-E-E? Yep. E-E. It's what top left, there? middle right. Okay. Now... Uh, hanging from reverse the tree. Reverse R. Reverse R. That would be a W. I mean, not inverse, but reverse, like flipped. Or the whole right side? Yes. Yeah. Okay, then that L shape again, the little L. The little L shape. An H. Yeah, man. I think. Uh, yeah, an A, if it's the top left and the middle two. And then an A again. Top left. And then that uh, T again, I believe. All right, now I'll Hanging swap. from the tree, what? Hanging from the tree, what? Hanging from the tree, what? Um, now I've lost them all again. How long is this message? What was um, what was both tops and then middle right? Baby seven. Both tops, middle right is D. 
Ooh, okay. And then, bloop, bloop, bloop. You know. Is that O? What are you talking about? Bloop, oh, top bloop, left, bloop, middle right, yeah. bottom left? Yeah. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Okay, ooh, and then I've got uh, backwards C. What do you mean by, oh, uh, Y. So like everything except the middle left? Yep. Then I've got bloop, bloop, bloop again. And then I've got a big elm but that's missing its middle. Uh, that's you. Lovely. And then you've got the top right, middle left, bottom left. You're a witch. How did you know? Yep. And then you've got the top left, middle right. Yep. Bleedle, bleedle. Same thing again. Yep. Hanging from the tree, what do you see? Oh. I see grass and lots of it, well, I guess. Well, last time you got a cryptic rhyming message, it did not go well for you. So Yeah, I jump onto the spike. Fingers crossed. Um... <laughs> I, I hang from the tree. I climb up to the tree and I hang precariously from the branches. All right. So um, if you climb up, you can see the top of the box completely covered in spikes. So you need to be careful. Oh, you don't want to fall on this. Um, but it sort of seems like it's making some kind of pattern. So you go a little bit higher and I'll show you what you can see. I get I an think image of that. and you're in a box. The image is for me because you're in a box. And I'm in the tree. Ah! Oh! Does it say too bad? No, it says spikes everywhere. It's ridiculous. If I look at it closely, I can't really see anything. But if I sort of pull back real far, oh. if I hang from a tree at a real, if I get all the way over here, it says three, two, four, six. I think. What do you think? What does that say? To you? Uh, from here, it looks like it says dead, so I don't want to ah! read it. <laughs> I think it says three, two, four, six. So I'm going to go, I'm going to jump from the tree and land in that Marvel hero pose <laughs> as a big shockwave flies out of the, from the grass around me. And then I'm going to run over to the anti tamper device. And in the four digit combo lock, I'm going to put in three, two, four, six. That combination works. The contraption is disarmed. You pick it up nice. and throw it as far as you can. And, and it you... explodes. It... <laughs> it does. So rude, Liam. You open the lid of the box and you see Elle laying, sweating and crying, shielding their eyes from the light. You help them up and hold them for a long time, both now crying with shock and relief. Elle steps out of the box on shaky legs and you both notice a message where they've been laying it says well done you may go now but beware one day i might test you again there's an arrow pointing west you assume that's the way home so you shakily begin in that direction hoping that you'll never be tested again nice Rude. what a menace well done guys <laughs> 